Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 15th, 2017. 105 here on the great WRKO. Okay, later in the show, should Boston Public Schools move back their start times? Uh, we're going to have that discussion and debate. Jingle Bells. It actually originated in the town of Medford, but guess what? Now the moon bats are saying don't sing it over the Christmas holiday season because it's racist. Why is it racist? We'll find out later as well. But first, so I have a piece up on WRKO.com in which I lay out how the media is going to try to turn Trump into the next Roy Moore. And as I said in my piece, the media establishment complex has now become the most powerful propaganda machine in history. And as Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels once famously said, tell a lie often enough and it becomes accepted as truth. Well, the deep state tried to sabotage and destroy Trump first during the election, and now they continue during his presidency. But we've also found out that many of the sexual harassment allegations against Trump, listen now to this. Many of them either sought money or actually were paid money to claim that Trump had sexually harassed them. Now, I reported in my piece that this is exactly what the Washington Post did to some of the women down in Alabama against Roy Moore. They were just throwing out cash. Just come out and say, he groped you, he dated you, give us something. Come on. Come on, the judge has got to go down. Well, listen to this. Now, um, according to the Hill newspaper, in an, uh, in an exclusive, the daughter of Gloria Allred, remember she was the, she's the infamous Democratic feminist, she's an arch-partisan, uh, the one who was with Beverly Young Nelson when they were accusing Roy Moore, it turned out that the inscription on the yearbook was a forgery, well, her daughter, Lisa Bloom, walking in her mother's footsteps, uh, she is a well-known so-called women's rights lawyer. Uh, she's into the whole gender card racket, the, uh, the gender mongering racket. Well, listen now to this. She apparently, on behalf of numerous women who accused Trump, of having sexually harassed them during the final months of the 2016 presidential campaign, actually went to donors and tabloid media outlets saying they're willing to sell their story, but it's got to be for the right price. And in fact, what she did was, for several of the so-called victims, she went to these TV outlets and arranged donors to pay off, in one case, one of the Trump accusers is mortgage. She also wanted to get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, for one client, $750,000 from some of these tabloids, or even from super PACs connected to the Hillary Clinton campaign. And so what she did was, they have now found emails and text messages between at least several of the women that eventually came out and claimed that Trump had sexually uh, harassed them or mistreated them 20, 30 years ago, that they went to the Hillary Clinton campaign committees, the re-elect Hillary campaign committees, saying, look, we can get these women out there, but they want money. They don't want to do it for free. And the emails and the text messages coming back were, well, how much? So, for example, um, by the way, she also got a cut. Every time she got money for her clients, she got a commission as high as 33%. So she also herself enriched herself by having these women go out there and supposedly sell their stories 
to I don't know the Globe or some uh, whatever the uh, the Star or some of these tabloids or sell them to TV outlets. Now there are a couple of women named in this story. One of them is Jill Harth. She is a former New York City makeup artist. Uh, apparently, they went to Priorities USA Action, which was the largest pro-Clinton super PAC, and said, look, she's willing to claim that Trump sexually harassed her. However, you got to get donors to pony up because she doesn't want to do it for free. And in particular... Her asking price was to pay for the mortgage on her queen's apartment in New York City. The mortgage was paid for, as of according to the um, according to the Hill and their investigation, that uh, Jill Harth shows now that her mortgage was recorded as paid off, extinguished. Uh, when they checked on, uh, this, um, uh, it was paid off and extinguished on December 19th, 2016. So, several months after she made her allegation, the check obviously was in the mail, the check cleared, and her mortgage was paid off. Now, she is the one that alleged that at Mar-a-Lago in 1997 that Trump allegedly just grabbed her, forced her against the wall, and then, forgive me, grabbed her by the pee. Because they wanted that to jive with the Billy Bush tape. And, um, of course, there were multiple witnesses who were there at the Mar-a-Lago estate, and they said that never happened. But that was the allegation that Jill Harth made. That's the allegation, by the way, that the media constantly repeated. And not only did she get her mortgage paid off, they've actually also set up a book deal for her, where now she's on her way of writing her so-called memoir and recounting her experience. Uh, then they had Jill Harth go out on Facebook, and apparently she went out on Facebook and urged other women to come forward about Trump, this was in the in October 2016, about uh, a month before the election. Saying, come on, come on, come on, you got to contact Lisa Bloom. People, tell your story, now's the time to tell your story. And so uh, Lisa Bloom then uh, texted back to Jill Harth, wow, Jill, that would be amazing if you can get more women. 27 days until the election. So, one of Hart's friend, uh, a woman who then came up with this allegation that Trump made an unsolicited advance uh, against her on the 1990s beauty contest circuit, she said, hey, hey, I hear Hart got a great deal. I want something similar. So, Bloom texted, quote, give us a clear sense of what you need, and we will see if, what we, if we can get it. Okay, so she said, well, you know, I want, I want a really good offer. So then Lisa Bloom said, okay, let's, how about $100,000? To which the woman then said, I was, I'm not impressed with $100,000. You know what? Hey, quote, after thinking about all this, I need more than $100,000. College money would be nice for her daughter. So she wanted at least $100,000, plus for her daughter to have all of her college expenses paid, plus they wanted relocation fees. Bloom then came back and said, okay, I've talked to people connected to the Hillary Clinton campaign. We think we can get you $200,000. They were going back and forth. The woman was not happy with $200,000. She wanted something as high eventually as $750,000. And Lisa Bloom did not have the time to get the money for her that quickly or agree to it. And so the deal eventually fell apart. Now, it goes on and on. What the bottom line is this. We now have definitive proof, whether it be in text messages or in emails, not all, but that some of the so-called accusers against President Trump were 
forgive me for having put it, put it like this, but that's what they are, political whores. What they were was, I'm going to make an accusation, and I'm going to smear this president, but I'm going to do this if you pay me the mullah. I'm not just going to go out there and say it, you've got to pay me. And I will do it. And you got to get me a book deal. I want you to get me something for the tabloids, maybe something on TV. In other words, I'm going to make sure that I'm taken care of, my daughter's taken care of, my family's taken care of, and then I'll say pretty much anything you want me to say. And that Lisa Bloom was directly involved in facilitating these negotiations. Now, I am telling you, and I've said this before, about her mother, and I'm going to say the same thing about Lisa Bloom. Whenever I see a so-called female accuser with either Gloria Allred or Lisa Bloom by their side, it's BS. You've discredited yourself. Because I know it's a, it's a hack job. I know that this is nothing more than a slanderous smear. That's all this is. A partisan political smear. These are the kinds of people the media are dealing with? These are the kinds of people that Hillary and the Democrats are dealing with? Basically, throw enough money and you can get any accusation you want? Just dangle enough money? You want to say you grabbed me by the P? That's $200,000. And throw in the mortgage. You want to say he raped me? Mm, that's a bit more now. And that's going to be about five, six hundred thousand dollars. Throw in the mortgage, and I also need relocation fees. And throw in a gym membership as well. Okay, throw that in. Lifetime gym membership. I mean, this is there's almost like a, a hierarchy. So it depends on the allegation, and on the allegation, that's how much we pay. Are you freaking kidding me? No, really, honestly, are you kidding me? And this, to me, goes to the heart of the matter. They are out to destroy this man, no matter what. And I am sounding the alarm bell, because the hashtag MeToo movement is now being perfectly designed to eventually bring Trump down, because the dangerous precedent that is now being set, and I want to be crystal clear about this, I generally am sympathetic to the women. I am. I My tendency is always to believe the women, okay? Because I know that actual sexual abuse and harassment occurs on the workplace. I know that because I defended women throughout my career. Whether it be here, whether it be at the Washington Times, whether it be at McGill, all throughout my career. However, what is now happening is that we're now seeing a culture of anonymous smears a culture almost like the Salem witch trials where a simple accusation is now accepted as proof and it is enough to destroy somebody's career or their entire life work now look Tavis Smiley from PBS okay, prominent African American liberal uh, leftist commentator I don't care for Tavis Smiley. I don't care for his politics. I don't care for his uh, 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 sycophantic support for Obama or his rabid never Trumpism. I don't agree with Tavis Smiley on anything. PBS just fired this guy. And he went to Facebook. And when you actually read the Facebook, so they fired him based on an anonymous accusation. They won't even tell him when it occurred or what really happened or any of the circumstances, but because of an anonymous accusation, PBS said, you know what, you're gone. And as Tavis Smiley said, whoa, hey, I never got due process. I never got to face my accuser. I never got to, get to know her name, know the date, know exactly what I'm being accused of, just some general sexual misconduct. It's, by the way, the same thing that happened to Garrison, uh, Kaler, Keeler, however, look, I don't care for him, big NPR lefty, I, I don't care for him. He's gone. And to this day, we don't even know why. Just, you know, allegations of sexual misconduct. Okay, 
What allegations? When? Where? By who? Nothing. Gone. Poof. Poof. He's been destroyed. Vaporized. Now, I want to ask you, I want to ask you this, all of you, how would you like it? And it doesn't matter, a woman now has gone down in flames in Kansas. It's affecting women. So a Democratic woman, a candidate for Congress, apparently was accused of sexual harassment uh, 12 years ago. This came out, and basically now she's had to drop out of the race. So it's affecting women, not just men now. It's spreading. Let me ask you. How would you feel if you lost your job, your reputation, and your career went up completely in smoke because somebody anonymously said that you had sexually harassed or molested or mistreated them? What would be your reaction? You don't even know who the person is. You don't know the identity. Well, who? Who's making this accusation? We can't tell you. Okay, what did I do? Can't really tell you. When? Did this happen? Where did this happen? I can't really tell you. And your life's work is gone. Your career finished. Your reputation stained in tatters. This is not America. People are entitled to due process. Well, who said the allegation? When did this happen? What exactly happened? Instead... They have now laid the groundwork for accusations alone are evidence. And I'm telling you, the reason why they're doing it, they want to bring Trump down. You pay the women, they will say anything. This is not conjecture. It's now fact. 617-266-6868. Your call's reaction next. 126 here on the great WRKO. Okay, um, explosive story uh, on the Hill newspaper. Uh, Gloria Allred's daughter, the ambulance chaser herself, Lisa Bloom. You know, the apple doesn't fall, fall too far from the tree. Now has been shown in emails and texts and documents to have offered, in fact, hundreds of thousands of dollars to some of the Trump accusers. One of them had their mortgage paid off. Uh, another one attempted to get uh, nearly $750,000 in order to accuse the president. In other words, some of the Trump women were paid off, and check this out, with cash from Democratic donors tied to the Hillary Clinton campaign. 617-266-6868. Lines are loaded. Russ in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Russ. First of all, Jeff, there is no justice in the court of public opinion. Now, if you want to crucify someone in the court of public opinion without someone with a jury trial, okay, then you are no better than any lynch mob that has ever existed. You are as ignorant of every person that's part of a lynch mob that wants to crucify someone that hasn't been given a trial. And now that this is happening in the United States of America, we are no safer here than you are any place in the world that is governed by dictators. And it's absolutely disgusting. And anybody with any half a brain should be outraged over this. That if we don't put a stop to this, we are all at risk. Everyone in this country is at risk. Uh, Russ, thank you very much for that call. Let me ask you, you, all of you, this question. Do you think this is going to damage social relations between men and women? And Brittany's nodding her head up enthusiastically in the booth, up and down. Because let me tell you what's going to start to happen. And I'm hearing this now from a lot of men. A lot of men are now telling me, I don't want to be alone, let's say with a female colleague or employee in an office. Because in five or ten years, for whatever reason, if she accuses me of having sexually harassed her or done anything, my career is over. I'm done. I'm toast. Because the automatic instinct now is to just simply believe the accuser without any due process whatsoever. And so what's going to start to happen is men are just, well, 
already I'm hearing a lot of men saying, I don't want to be alone with a woman. I don't want to be alone with her in an office or in any place. But even more than that, a lot of men, I'm not just talking about now in office spaces, I'm talking just in generally, a lot of men are saying like, well, if I approach a woman and say, hey, you're attractive, I'd like to take you out for a drink, or, you know, I want to go out, or we, you know, date, or can we have dinner, or whatever, she may say, well, he propositioned me inappropriately, or he made me feel uncomfortable, or whatever, and so I may be accused of sexually harassing her. So what's going to happen is you're going to start to destroy relations between men and women because there are no more ground rules because suddenly everything is harassment everything so let me ask you are you seriously are you afraid to be alone with a female colleague female employee number one and to the women to you do you feel that men may start turning away from women because they're going to feel in some ways that they could be destroyed by an anonymous or, or any kind of an accusation? Is this going to damage relations between men and women? Is this, in fact, going to hurt women in the long run because they're alienating so many men? 617 266 6868. We're going to have your calls, I promise. But first, the president is sounding the alarm on terrorist threats. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom where he has those details. What is the president saying? Evan. 136 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. I'm telling you, Santa Claus just came early. I've been saying this now for a long time. The Boston Broadside is my favorite, favorite publication in all of Massachusetts. Uh, to me, it is the only true conservative newspaper that we still have. Uh, by the way, even if you're in New Hampshire, they also cover a lot of stuff in New Hampshire. Uh, but it is a really, really very good publication. Uh, so be the sixth caller right now. 617-931-1680, 617-931-1680, and you will win an annual subscription to the Boston Broadside. It's part of our WRKO box office giveaway. It's a tw You get 12 monthly issues of Boston's only conservative newspaper. You can also find out more at bostonbroadside.com. Uh, I have a regular column that I write for them. Furthermore, when it comes to exposing DCF, illegal immigration, welfare fraud, EBT abuse, you name it, you name it, the Boston broadside, I'm telling you, is absolutely fearless. They are the alternative to the entire mainstream media here in New England. Um, and even if you can't, you know, if you can't get in, because a lot of people are calling, 617-931-1680, uh, Please go to the bostonbroadside.com, get yourself or a friend a subscription. I think it's only $24. You're really supporting a great publication, and we keep saying we want alternative media. They are the alternative media. 617 266 6868 if you want to be part of the show. Um, okay, a lot of texts. You can text us at 680 680. This is from. 508. And I'm getting a lot of this. A lot of this. Jeff, my wife and I have a close group of friends, six to eight couples. There is no more light hugging and kissing on the cheek as a means of saying hello or greeting each other. It's all handshakes now. A lot of people are telling me this. You know, you hug somebody at the office or a friend or whatever that could now be considered sexual harassment. Uh, you could, people can complain about that. It could destroy your career. People, they're not hugging anymore. They're not the little kiss on the cheek. That, a lot of people are saying, I don't do that anymore, Jeff. I don't do it at work. I don't even do it with friends because of this new hashtag Me Too movement. Um, a lot more. Here, this is from 617. Jeff. I used to give a lot of harmless compliments just to boost the women's spirits. I stopped. Now they just hang out in my office waiting for it. It is hurting women. I see pain and depression. 
978. Jeff, people may be worried to hire a woman. It's going to be a backlash. I got to tell you, I'm hearing that as well. I'm hearing a lot of people say, you know, I think a lot of employers are going to be reluctant to start hiring women because what if they make an accusation, especially, I hate to say this, attractive women? Because what's harassment, what's not harassment, uh, everything could potentially be harassment. You make one accusation, you're finished. And so a lot of people may start concluding, we don't need the headache. We just don't need this trouble. In other words, I don't know if this thing is going to help women in the long run. Um, also, okay, this is 978. Really good text. Jeff, I'm a 50-year-old woman. We just got into the boardroom. This hysteria is definitely going to put us right back into the waiting room. And I'm not sure I can blame them for it. Also, extremely concerned for my 15-year-old son. How will he know how to court a girl? 978, you are so dead on, it's not even funny. Quick story. Grace and I are high school sweethearts. I was 16, she was 15 when we first started to date. Now, I'm telling you right now, the way I approached and courted Grace, by today's standards, I'm a pig. I, I, no, I think I'm a sexual harasser. Uh, really, I'm serious. By today's standards, I would be destroyed destroyed because when i first saw her in the hallway i mean it was like a thunderbolt i knew right away by the way that's the girl for me and so i walked up to her and i said hey do you want to go out on a date i'd love to take you to mcdonald's or a movie or whatever she said no so i wouldn't take no for an answer because i said this is my wife i said i'm not letting my future pass up are you crazy this is it this is my mrs right this is my this is the woman we're gonna have a family with so I asked her again, a couple of well, weeks, so, uh, maybe a week later. I said, come on, you got to give me a chance. Come on, you got to go. You don't know what you're missing. Trust me. She said no. I then somehow got a number, her number from her friend, and I called her at the house. And I remember the father first picked up, and he didn't know who I was. He was like, hello. You know, he's Italian. I'm like, uh, can I speak to Grace, please? And his shtick was to scare off the boys. <sighs> He'd breathe like really heavy and have you just sit there for like 10 seconds waiting. I'm thinking, is he going to pass the phone or not? And he'd go, okay. And then I would hear in Italian, Graziella. Her name is Graziella in Italian. So he'd like bark out. She'd come down, hello. And then she was shocked. What are you doing? How'd you get my number? I said, no, look, one of your friends gave it to me and... Come, are you sure? Come on, I'm a drink. Can't we do anything? See a movie, please. Anyway, long story short, I finally said I got to give her one last call. Called her up on a Saturday night. Thank the Lord the father didn't pick up because I think he would have hung up on me because I kept, I kept pestering him. She got on the phone, and I went on for 20 minutes on this speech that when I saw her, she was the woman of my dreams that I had a dream about her, that she and I are going to get married. And I said, look, you're going to miss the opportunity of a lifetime. This is your destiny. So I said, you and I are going to get married. So either you date me now or you date me later. And she told me that she was so won over by just how I wore my, I don't know, my, my, my attraction to her, I don't know how else to put it, <laughs> Brittany says she would have hung up on me. <laughs> she was just so overwhelmed with, honestly, my, I don't know, just my passion, my, uh, you know, just my, I don't know, just the way I just sort of laid it out there for her that she said, okay, I'm going to give him a chance. Like, this guy really, he seems to know what he's talking about. And so we went out on a date, and as they say, it's all she wrote. <laughs> now, by today's standards. You're a stalker by today's oh, standards. I'm a stalker. I'm a sexual harasser. I'm a stalker. I'm a... So what I'm trying to tell you is, I don't know how many relationships are going to get damaged by this hashtag MeToo movement. Now, Brittany, I know you want to weigh in on this. I would have a 
If I were a guy, I'd have a consent form that I'd have women sign if you want to go on a date with me or something, because this is getting out of hand. And I truly believe I'm kind of on both sides with this. I think that there are sexual harassment and sexual assaults going on. Like, we can't deny that. Um, but I also think that this is just getting out of control with the Me Too movement. Now, truthfully, I think that the women that are sexually harassed and or assaulted and raped and whatever, they're not going to be believed because there have been so many women that have come out and said that a man sexually harassed them or sexually assaulted them, and it really didn't happen. Um, whether it's money or whatever they want, attention, 15 minutes of fame. So I think the people that are really going to be hurt by this are the women that are really raped and assaulted and sexually harassed. I agree with because you. Because no one's going to believe them anymore. I agree with so you. So we need to take a, a look into our culture now and figure something out, you know, raise the men to respect women and, and women to respect men. And that's another thing. Growing up nowadays, it's really hard, especially, you know, when there's one parent or whatever. So, and with the cell phones, people don't even pay attention to their kids anymore. They're on their phones and Twitter and Facebook and You're everything completely else. Right. You're completely right. And look, before I dive into the calls, there was one uh, guy who works in the building. I don't want to say his name. He asked to be anonymous. But he said, you know, Jeff, really, I revere women, I respect women, I was raised to respect women, but now when I see all these accusations flying left, right, and center, he goes, honestly, when I heard your monologue, you know, he came in to tell me this, out of the blue, he's just listening, and he comes in and to the booth during the commercial break, and he said, Jeff, I don't want to be alone with a woman now in the, in the, uh, in the kitchen, the office kitchen. I don't want to be alone with her in an office. Even on the hallway, I'm very careful what I say, how I say it, because now, God forbid, you say the wrong thing or it comes across the wrong way. Before you know it, she's at Human Resources, and I'm gone. I mean, I'm gone. In other words, one accusation now is enough to get this poor guy fired. And he said, that's why, Jeff, I don't look left, I don't look right, I just look straight ahead. Joni on Cape Cod. Go ahead, Joni. Yeah, but I see People lose their jobs over 20 years ago. Oh, I think I lost right. Joni. I think we lost Joni. Okay. Chuck on Savin Hill. Go ahead, Chuck. You there? Chuck, yeah. go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah, I'm uh, right here. Hey, I was just thinking um, that, uh, you know, there's two types of lives. You protect yourself with one, and the other one, you destroy people. And in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. I think that's a pretty serious one, and these people don't think of that. No, I agree with you. Uh, look, really, I mean, you know, look, I don't like Dustin Hoffman. I think he did, frankly, between you and me, mistreat a lot of women in his acting career. I believe some of the women. But there was a big story up in um, Vanity Fair, okay? I read it last night. And three women allege that Dustin Hoffman sexually assaulted them or, or harassed them. Okay, forget there was two. I don't want to get into those two. But there was a third one. I found this unbelievable. So it's a woman who claims she's anonymous. She wants to remain anonymous. Okay. She says that she worked as an extra on one of du Dustin Hoffman's films. Okay. She says that when they did the, the rap party, in other words, the movie's over, they all had a party. And so they jumped into a station wagon, all of them, I guess, to go out to eat or whatever. Dustin Hoffman, Dusty, was in the back with this girl. She claims, i got to be careful, it's a family show, that he put his hands up her skirt and, forgive me, okay, okay, you get it, okay? Now, so she says she felt violated. Now, listen to this. She then says he gave her $20.00 to take a cab to the San Remo Hotel where he was staying. She says when they dropped her off, she actually did take the cab, went to the San Remo Hotel after she was allegedly assaulted. He's waiting for her outside. They then meet. She admits they went up to his hotel room. I got to be careful how I say this. Do you know what Monica Lewinsky was alleged to have done with Bill Clinton? She says that's what Dustin Hoffman did to her, and then they had sex together, you know, intercourse in bed. Now, 
when asked by the reporter at Vanity Fair, when he touched her, okay, let's put it that way, in the station wagon, was that non-consensual? Her answer, yes. Well, what happened at the San Remo Hotel, was that non-consensual? You know what her answer was? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. So, first of all, he assaults you. Then you take a cab. Then you go meet him. Then you go up into his room. Then you allow him to, forgive me, you know, Monica Lewinsky. And then you have sex with the guy. And you're claiming that you don't know if it was consensual or not? Uh, lady, are you crazy? Now, I'm not saying the other women are lying. But what I'm saying is what is clearly consensual sex between a man and a woman, now has turned into a freaking sexual assault. That's the problem. It's out of control. Joni, I think we got her back. Joni on yes. the Cape. Go ahead, Joni. Yes, hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I agree with the woman professional who talked about, you know, the fact that women have just now gotten into the boardroom. Yes. Which, uh, that this hysteria needs to stop. You know, there's this mob mentality. I don't understand why people really aren't using their own intellect and their own awareness and their own, you know, humanity to discern the truth about situations because in, Many, many, many instances, it's obvious. Women know that women lie. Men lie, women lie. But as a woman, I've been personally accused. I've been affected. My life and my family have been affected by a woman's lies. It was a little different. It was a, um, without getting into details, more of a uh, situation of a divorce. Of a divorce and a woman lying and destroying family members because of lies and people just need to really see that number one i'm sorry that i'm a little off point because i know this is no about, no no you look uh, you, you sexual look. harassment no no i understand you know? that so but it's also about lies and it's also about awareness and truth and Tony. women know that you know generally in the past historically people have been uh, understanding about uh, women and issues of sexual harassment. But, you know, we've just come so far. We have so much equality now across the board, race, gender. Just people need to wake up and stop backtracking us as though, you know, we don't have this equality. I just don't get it. Just people Joni, are not using their intellect. You're completely right. And I think, Joni, the, the word that I would add to your, uh, I think, very good call is common sense. Like, as an example, and you tell me, I don't know, maybe you disagree with me, Joni. Like, when I pursued my, you know, my now my wife, then girlfriend, you know, Grace, <laughs> when I was 16, she could obviously tell I wasn't a stalker. I wasn't an evil, malicious guy. I was just a you know a nice guy, uh, a, a, somebody in high school, smart, serious, uh, obviously just taken with her, and I'm trying to ask her out on a date, you know, right. and she almost found right. it charming how this guy just won't let go, and he's trying to be funny, and he's trying to make me laugh, and he wants me to say yes, and it seems like we've lost all common sense, whereby women are able to discern, you know, who's a jerk, who's not a jerk. Who's a stalker? Who's not a stalker? And now it's getting to the point, really, honestly, Joni, I think we're going to have a crisis in social relations. Because I Absolutely. think a lot of men are going to say, you know, Jeff, if I ask her out on a date and I push it a second time or a third time, she goes to the principal, she complains, she goes to wherever, and before you know it, I'm a stalker, I'm a pig. Yeah. And and my, and my call in the specifics that I you know can't get into, but... You know, there have been a lot of men and a lot of families, and in my case, I'm a woman, and I've been hurt by a woman crying wolf falsely. So when I see these these instances where there's absolutely no evidence, a person can wait 30, 40 years, really, to say anything, and then just, you know, automatically, this is, it's just so bizarre. 
You know, I, I agree with you. I think, honestly, this is all backtracking right to Donald Trump. I think it's all designed. People are going down like dominoes. Bingo. I mean, what is this? No, well, bingo. Look, this Joni, Joni I, I got to let you go, but thank you for that call. Look, what they, look, here's the precedent they've now established. Think about it. That someone can make an accusation 30, 40 years ago, allegedly, where nobody can prove or disprove, and you have to automatically believe the accuser. Because they can't get them on obstruction. They can't get them on Russia. So they're going to figure, what the hell? We'll get them on the women. Uh, Sam in California. No, hold on. You know what? Let's hold off. Uh, I don't want to rush Sam. We're going to continue to take your calls on this, I promise. And then, after a few calls, Boston Public Schools, they're changing the start time and the departure time. Why are they doing this? And is it good for the students? Is it good for the parents? And is it good for education? That story, more with your calls, next. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 2 o'clock.